Hello, it is EDC day today. I'll be covering uh, the month of August, which is about to start. May well have started by the time you see this video. Uh, I will do an initial pocket dump first. This is my stuff that I've got me today. Today has been a home day. I've been outside with the dogs doing lots of kind of little yard tasks. They've made a real mess of things out there. Uh, them Between them and the stormy weather we've had lately, it's a bit of a shit show out there at the moment. So. Um, yeah, just been out, been using my knives and stuff, and using my torch even, had to go behind the shed for some stuff. It's been good, good active day, as my dad would have called it um, when I was a little puttering around, one of those sorts of days. So, uh, first up, I've got the little fixed blade on my, on my hip, a Bark River JX6 uh, companion knife in CPM 154 steel. Uh, very nice little blade, I'll just put these things down, we'll have a look at them in a sec. Uh, I've also got my Karis Customs Retract pen, I have my Almar Falcon Ultralight, which very rarely isn't with me. I'll talk about my, perhaps my new alternative to that in a minute. Uh, my iPhone 6S, um, still a decent phone if you're interested in phones. Um, my gun deck wallet made by Das Offin Mir, um, pretty much been my wallet for the last at least six months or so. A great viewer of mine, Chris, sent this along to me. Legendary. Um, and then I've got a hanky in my back pocket as well, and I'll talk a bit about that in a sec as well. Uh, my keys are the last thing, which I guess have my keys as well as my torch on there. This is the only torch I carry. Um, I find having a clip torch in my pocket is just, it's more annoying than, than beneficial when this one, my keys, I'm happy to just get my keys out all the time and, and switch it on and off, it's fine. So a Surefire Titan A and some Uncle Bill's sliver grippers, which are really one of the most common used items on my EDC. Um, because I've got kids and they're already getting splinters and all sorts of things. Let's uh, go to the table and I'll show you um, these things a bit closer up. Alright, so the Bark River JX6 is first. Have a bit of a look at that one. You can see it's got a, um, a logo here from the designer, a Prepared Mind 101 YouTube channel uh, runner, uh, Chris Tanner. Bark River on the other side there. This is a blue, um, mic, uh, no, blue G10 polished with um, orange micarta liners. Uh, it's got sort of a um, Canadian belt knife kind of feel to it in terms of um, being a sort of the blade lowering down below the or level with almost the index finger knuckle. Um, would be a great sort of cross draw carry. Um, it just comes in a little bark from a sheath for uh, vertical carry. No worries at all. Um, Sabre Vex grind as Chris says. Um, and it did have somewhat of a micro bevel already but then I went and put a a workshop micro bevel on it, which um, I think I'll restore back to a. Um, I probably might even just go on full convex it on some um, mouse paper and a sand pad. <laughs> mouse paper, mouse pad and sandpaper trick. Anyway, it's still very, very sharp now. I just um, stropped it back to life after my testing and it did very well. So there's that. Uh, the Karis Customs uh, Render K. Uh, I really recommend Karis Customs pens. Um, they are very, very nice. They have a really soft click on and they will come with good inks. I like their pocket clip, it was good. Um, this one sticks out a little bit, but you can get ones that don't. You can get ones with screw on lids, you can get fountain pens, all sorts of things. This one's made of just tumbled aluminium. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, I've got a couple of other Karis pens. This is probably, uh, you know, this and the uh, Render K are my favorite. The EDK I found is a bit short. Um, they're Alma Falcon Ultralight. Nice, um, very light, very light knife. You barely even notice it. Um, my Carter, um, I think it's in the realm of like 1.8 ounces or something like that. Uh, AUS 8 steel, not the best. Uh, easy to sharpen though, very you know, very much a, um, a slicing knife, very slicey, a thin stock on it. Cuts well, um, I just have, I've been using it that much, it's pretty beat up by now. It's kind of got a bit of a rattle in it. It's at that point where I've got no illusions of gonna, I'm going to resell it or anything like that, so I'm just going to use it till it dies. The Alma Falcon, Offin Mir, Gumdeck Leather Wallet, you probably see these all over the place. These are just wonderful. Um, very thin, low, I keep my wallet in my back pocket. I think you keep your wallet in the same way that you, you remember seeing your dad keep his wallet, and my dad was a back, or is, was, is a back pocket wallet person, and um, so I've become the same, and sure enough, it's nice and thin to sit on every day, so it's good. For me, the iPhone 6S is a good phone that is good at being a phone and no problems at all there. Um, the Titan A is a good torch in about 120 lumens range. I don't need any more of a torch than that. I haven't ever been in a situation where I've used my EDC torch and thought, I wish this was brighter. Because um, I, I have house torches, I have bigger torches around the place. 
Uh, and this has got a little pair of Uncle Bill's slipper grip for tweezers on there as well, which are a great little uh, everyday carry thing for men, women, kids, everyone. Um, use these all the time. Tweezers very handy. And then this handkerchief is, it's pretty new. It's from an Australian company called Kingdom Hanks. This is like a kind of, just got really cool stitching. It's a bit of a cobbled together of like other fabrics uh, they have. Um, very, very nice. On the other side, it is plain. So you'd use this as like your grabbing side if you're using it for the old radiator right cap or the hanky stuff. Hanky, it's a bit like a knife, like, or a little torch. You don't realize how often you're gonna need it until you carry it in your pocket, and it's damn handy. So, um, I usually carry one of those buff bandanas, so I do a lot anyway. Um, but I'm gonna have a crack at using the uh, Kingdom Hanks Hank. It's got good quality stitching. It's, uh, I like how it's double, like it's, you know, it's pretty much two layers. Very, very good. It's, you know, it's just a square, so it doesn't fold out huge like some hankies, but I think they do, um, some that do do that. So have a look on their site. Um, or is it Kingdom Hanks? You check them out on Instagram, it's probably best. Very sort of modern young couple, I think, running them. Um, seem like good folks. So um, yeah, check them out on Instagram. That's probably the best place to start. And then uh, follow the links through to their site, which I'll stick down below in my description. Good, good stuff. There. Now let's go into some other things. Push all this off my side. I'll go, go to some things that um, I'll be looking at in the future. All right, so these items here are all in for sort of review. Um, none of these are mine, except for the U2. Um, and the U2, I've already reviewed this a long time ago, but this is really sort of definitely gonna give the Falcon a run for its money. Uh, if this had a clip, I'd probably like it a lot more than the Falcon. This is actually cheaper than the Falcon, which has a so far inferior steel. It's crazy, but they're both about the same weight, probably about the same purpose. Um, probably similar fit and finish quality. Maybe the Alma's a little bit better, but yeah, the U2 is a great little pocket bottom knife, as in you could have this every day and then have like your main fun knife uh, elsewhere. So good, good stuff, the U2. I love that a lot. Put that back there. Uh, elsewhere, we have a Benchmade Mini, what is this, the five? Nope, the 615, the Mini Ruckus. This isn't made anymore. They are making an automatic version of the same pattern. This is sort of a pattern that's come and gone from Benchmade. So this one's the mini ruckus and it's quite a big knife. I wonder how big the large ruckus must have been. But it's an access lock folder and S30V. It's um, it's pretty nice. It's uh, my mate Damo sent it across to me to have a bit of a look at. Uh, it's got a deep carry Benchmade pocket clip that's reversible. All the elements are here for a good, big, rugged sort of knife. Uh, it's got finger grooves that do fit my hands pretty well. Um, in my general first impressions of it are positive. I could use a new edge, which I'll definitely put on there for old mate Damo when I do that, um, before I send it back and probably before I carry and review it much more. But overall, it's a nice sort of big, you know, thick lined, they don't dick around with this knife. It's definitely for, you know, complex jobs or, you know, protracted work, I would say for sure. And then I've got another one of Damo's knives. He sent me, this is a CRKT M16. Uh, this is the S14SF, so the 414 are like the big dog series, so these are like your large M16s. Uh, I don't know what steel this is, it could be anything. They've made this in so many different steels. I would suggest it's probably AUS8 or HCR13. Um, this is like a classic design, like it's, this is the bigger version of a classic design at the very least, so maybe this is the first version. Um, so yeah, it's like a hilt flipper knife. So the flipper tab becomes this hilt. So very daggerish. This one's interesting because it is saber ground. So by saber grind, I mean that um, the actual edge bevel, so the edge is saber grind. Um, that does have two hollow ground faces here, but yeah, so they've got no secondary bevel here, or if there is one, a very, very thin, small one, that's probably just a product of them putting this one on and then buffing it. So yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure that's the same on all of them. Um, this one is very, very old apparently. It's an old friend of his used it. Apparently it might have seen some um, military service at some point. So very curious to see um, how I feel about this one. It's, it's, I already know it's too big for me and probably too fighty for me. Uh, it does have a pocket clip that I could reverse if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, just it's cool to have. I've always seen these M16s and I think it's a good thing if you're a knife appreciator to, to have a classic pattern like this come across your table just to assess it. Um, but yeah, overall it's aluminium handles. I think that's a G10 or a Zytel backspacer there. It's got a lock to lock it open here. So you can lock that forward and then the line lock doesn't close. So just a few little details on here. Um, yeah, definitely not my general style of knife, but there it is, that'll see a review. 
And this is the Spyderco Brad Southard, Spyderco Southard knife. This is lovely. Uh, this was sent for me to do a cut test by a buddy of mine, Adam. Um, and yeah, he uh, said, you know, take a minute and have a, you know, a bit of a play with it. So I'll uh, be doing a review on this quickly so I can send it back via a professional sharpener to get a lovely um, mirrored finish put on this one because it's still like this, the CTS 204P. That'd wear a great, um, you know, mirror polish, Apostle P type edge really well. But this is a great knife, and I've really enjoyed it so far. Um, it's um, it came like with a little bit of pocket wear on it, but it's almost, you know, more or less pristine still. Um, so yeah, very um, good combination of a Spyderco flipper that's still nice and narrow, still got a hole in it. So like, if you remember the Domino that I just reviewed, the hole was kind of pointless in this one. Yeah, you can still kind of use the hole if you want, but it is just more there as an unobtrusive uh, motive. Whereas, um, you know, in the Domino, it was a little, you know, it added dimension when it didn't really add function. So this one's great though. Uh, it's all black finish. They sell this in, I think, a brown and a satin as well. An interesting knife. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, this is a SOG Trident. So this is a Japanese SOG Trident. So it's, um, AUS 8, it doesn't have the, the red flag when it's um, unlocked or armed. Uh, and it's got the classic arc lock that is uh, a little bit different, I think, as well has changed. This is kind of a cool little collector's piece. So right now it's locked, but this is unusual in Australia because it is, it's uh, spring assisted, quite, quite severely spring assisted. So very, very quick, um, really flashes out, um, yeah serrated edge, very, very fun to play with. It's a really, really light knife as well, and it feels very, very well built too. Um, black finish is more or less perfect. My friend um, Killer Deegan sent this one to me. Uh, he, he did some reviews on my Lion Steel and my, um, my Cold Steel Master Hunter, and he sent this with it back for me to have a bit of a look at. I'm not sure it's for me. I'm not sure if it's my cup of tea. I do appreciate the collectability of something like this in Australia. Customs would, you'd be very, very lucky to get this through customs. They'd just have to not check the package because if they checked it, it would be gone. Never get this through. I think AUS 8 still, still in this one. Uh, they, they're AUS 8 now, I think, and I think they always have been. Uh, maybe VG10, I don't know. It doesn't say anywhere on it, so I'm not sure. This is quite a nice knife. It is. It's a good tactical knife. It's. It doesn't say SOG all over it, it just says it once on the clip and once on the blade, so the handle is relatively unmolested by their overbranding. It's got this, I always find this a bit cheesy here, like I don't think anyone's, I don't think anyone's really going to use that, like, to cut belts or whatever. It's just not a, it's one of those solutions to a problem that doesn't really exist, I think. Um, and then, yeah, but overall it's really light, the handle is really comfy. Um, it's kind of cool. It is very, very cool knife for sure. And then last of all is a Victorinox Swiss Champ, another one from Damo. This one is it's one of those Swiss, tool, uh, Swiss Army knives that gets pretty wide but has all the tools on it. So even the pliers. I haven't had a Swiss Army knife with the pliers on it before. Uh, everything else is... Uh, the pliers and the fish tool are new to me. So interesting there. All right. So that is my EDC. Um, that's mainly what I've been carrying. This is what I'll be reviewing in the immediate future, I guess. Uh, there'll be other stuff, of course, as well. And the JX6 review, I'm going to do a written review for everydaycommentary.com, and that'll drop on the same day as the video review, uh, I would guess, because I really want to get some... As I said, when, when I review expensive knives, I want to um, be sure that they're, you know, they get a little bit of extra testing. They get a little bit of extra looking at... Um, unless they're just lenders coming through, I'll probably just do more of a showcase of this one. I'm not going to hard use this knife because it's not mine, but um, this one I'm going to properly use and I'm going to write thoughts about in the coming weeks, so be a bit more depth about this one here. Uh, anyway, um, that will be the video for today. I've also been carrying the uh, Spidey Chef, wait, fudge that, the Spidey Chef and the uh, Skeletal CX a fair bit as well, if you're interested in those knives or multi-tools there. Quite cool too. Alright dudes, that'll be it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.